those were atrocious costumes. It was like this bright fluorescent orange and yeah, pink. Nobody. And it's like, come on, Indians wear such beautiful costumes. You had like, to dig up a toilet. Yes. So you dig a hole with a shovel, and then you cover. Yes. Did you? No. Oh my god. We, Did you have to sign anything? Like if you died on this. <laughs> Probably expedition did. I wanted. signed something I don't remember what I signed oh god I know I just signed my life away and I was like imagine if you're doing your business and then a freaking elephant comes up behind you then what do you do <laughs> what if a bug bites you I don't care about a bug I'm way more scared of the elephants coming after me <laughs> I think a black person having red hair is the least of your concerns bro <laughs> Respecting the traditional custodians, we acknowledge the Tarabul and Ghana peoples as the original inhabitants of the lands now known as Brisbane and Adelaide. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging, and recognize their enduring connection to the land, waters and culture. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Brown Girls Down Under. I'm Deshani, joining from South Australia and I've got Shanali from Brisbane. Hello Desh. How are you going? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Are you tired I after work? I am tired. It's been a big weekend and not even the yes. fun kind, unfortunately. It's yeah. just been a weekend full of work and... Did you work the whole weekend? I did, except for Friday because we were closed. But I got school yeah. holidays, which is great. I know I've been talking oh, nice. about it for the last few weeks. <laughs> yes, you have. I've had a yes. countdown. Um, <laughs> but I finally got holidays. And then I think I've mentioned before um, that I do retail on the weekends. And mm. Easter, the Easter long weekend is a weekend that I will never miss during exactly uh, in Get retail those public holiday yeah rates. those penalty rates raining <laughs> in so yeah so is um easter sunday a public holiday in brisbane we had saturday sunday monday all three were public holidays right yeah. i think it's the first time that easter sunday was a public holiday in south australia really yeah, I, I I feel like South. Yeah, That's it has something. always been a public holiday in Melbourne as well. But yeah. I just um found out that um it was the first time that people got public holiday rates for working Sunday. What? When like uh, Saturday, I understand, but Easter Sunday is like a obvious public yeah, holiday. Yeah, that's right? like but Christmas. I'm happy they got that's it. That's like the Christmas yeah. day, basically. It's all ever exactly. since I've done retail here, which has been like the last eight years. It's always been. A public holiday so that's strange yeah yeah exactly and i like it seems a bit weird but anyway i'm, I'm happy that people got the the public yeah, holiday exactly. right exactly yeah but yeah it's been really good um how was your weekend i know you did lots of fun stuff yes we had a very spontaneous trip was that spontaneous uh, yes it was it, yes and no because um like i think i've previously said as well in this rotation i get public holi- public holidays off whereas in my previous rotation i didn't because i got oh, every okay. other friday off so i have that appreciation for pul- the, the thing with um, the previous rotation was i got more days off but then having but public holidays i would work but then public holidays mj would have them off yeah. but then i would have fridays off when mj's mj would work so right, okay. it wasn't very doing much for us but um, this rotation, I have public holidays off, so I've been telling MJ, like, we need to do, like, stuff on the public holidays, yeah. we need to travel, because I, th- I don't think we've ever travelled, this is probably the second time we've just, tra- we've travelled by just ourselves, right, okay. the first one would have been when we travelled in Sri Lanka, and we felt like we were just, we didn't know what to do, because we haven't travelled yeah. by ourselves, we were like, someone needs to supervise us, because... <laughs> When people ask me questions, I just don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I, I feel like I just need to be surprised and we just don't know just what to do. And someone MJ else just looking for someone else to answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then MJ is like panicking all the time because like he has this, he, I feel like, for, I don't know, for some reason he feels pressured because he feels like he's responsible for me. 
<laughs> and then I'm like, I can take care of myself. You don't need to. I've, I don't know why you have this yeah. unnecessary pressure. And he's like, I don't know. Have you packed enough food? Have you packed enough water? Oh have God. you packed enough cleaning supplies? I'm like, bro, calm down. That's We're just going for though. one night. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I just, I've told him like, let's go away. But we haven't, de- we didn't decide where we want to go. Um, and then Friday, uh, we went to the gym and we went to buy groceries. And then we were just looking at, we were considering a few places. And then we found an Airbnb because because of the Easter weekend, a lot of, every, of course, almost everything's like yeah. booked out, yeah, right? Yeah. And then we're like, oh, we found this one tiny house um that was available there was that had only like one review and then i was like booked that's it was it super expensive though because it was last minute no it was well it was i reckon for tiny houses it's not bad it was like 200 bucks really that's really good yeah yeah that's what i thought and it had only one review so i was like this is either very dodgy (laughs) or like we're either gonna get killed or we're gonna have the best time (laughs) ever yes um and we haven't been in like a tiny house or anything like that before so we had our doubts but it was like it's all right it's about the journey not about the destination let's just try to enjoy the journey and where was it but Oh, we went to Mount Gambia. Oh, okay, yeah. But there's a few places along the way as well. So there's like um, in Mount Gambia, there's this um blue, there's this lake called. I blue saw lake. that. Wow. I've never seen water that blue. Yeah. It's just like a very deep, like sort of like a royal blue, and it's I don't know. And is it just, super deep? It is. There was a little blue lake that was like twenty meters deep. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I'm not sure how... Are I you talking the... about the volcano one? Like the old volcano? Yeah, that one? Okay. yes, yes. Because yes, I, yes, after yes. you guys posted on your story, I went to the tag and I was looking at pictures of other people swimming mm. there. It looked beautiful, but it looked really deep. Yes. So I was like... It looks does. It looks very... And when you're driving there, like on the way to it, you just... you the the, the There's like a drive that's like very close along the Blue Lake. Okay like around surrounding the blue lake and it just creeps you up like out of nowhere it comes like all of a sudden you have all these trees and then bam like the blue lake and it feels so like scary at first when you see that because it's massive and it's like very deep blue it's it's beautiful but it's like it's looks scary at the same time and then people i think if you want to dive you need to like book and go with like proper oh, okay. licensed people. Okay. But um, but you can swim. But yeah, I think yeah. If you like, did you go swimming? Swimmer, you can. No, no okay. I can't swim. Oh, so. true, true. Okay. <laughs> because I saw a few people but, swimming, but they had like the the floaties and stuff. Yes. No. That's the. Did you see that in MJ story? Yeah. Yeah. So that would be the little blue lake. Oh, okay. Yeah, and a lot of people swim there, and that even that's like twenty meters deep or something. But right. the you can swim in both lakes, but um, I think you must have seen the little blue lake. Oh. But yeah, and then there's also a lot of caves there because of the volcanic and the sort of limestone caves. A lot of um, things you can see, and we didn't check this because it was a very spontaneous trip. We didn't check. Um, apparently you have to book these before you go inside the caves oh, okay. and everything was like booked out yeah. but um, we could go to the we, we ended up going to the Narakut it's like a another um, sort of city between Mount Gambia and Adelaide mm. um, and they have limestone caves as well so we right. ended up going there which was more closer to the Airbnb the tiny house we were mm. um, in but yeah it was a very good drive um it is a beautiful drive it's not very like sort of flat and dry Mm. there's a lot of trees Mm. and stuff like that Mm. and a lot of um towns that um does a lot of um agricultural sort of um what do you call that um you know there's a lot of farms and things like that that you know feel like um has a lot of agricultural equipment and things like that um which was really nice and then yeah it, it there's a lot of um 
what do you call that aboriginal towns oh, right, in, okay. on the way as mm. well which is really nice and how long um, was the drive i think well it took us about five hours because we were stopping, stopping along the, along way. the yeah. way but i think if you drive straight it's only like four four and a half right hours. okay but um and then we so our airbnb we had to drive back um after we so we went to Narakud and then go to Mount Gambia and then we had to drive back to our Airbnb but by the time we got to our Airbnb it was like eight o'clock oh wow okay yeah there was a few things to see in Mount Gambia um and then we had lunch and then came back uh but the tiny house was like surprisingly nice yeah um it was very clean um did you guys cook I feel like there the whole- or you took food we did. We grilled a few stuff okay. and then um, had a quick, quick dinner, but we weren't that hungry. But um, and <laughs> it was right next to this. Well, not right next to it, but a, very closer to this very um, regional sort of pub mm. that had a karaoke night that oh, night. Wow. <laughs> Please tell me you went and sang. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. But there was I'm this so Bogan disappointed people. in you. <laughs> <laughs> there was this Bogan people. Oh my god, they were having, they were really nice, yeah. and um, we were the, I feel like we were the only brown people that they've seen for, I don't know, <laughs> weeks <whole> probably, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, they were just singing, and oh my god, this, like, it's very rural, right. is what I would say, but, um, but you could hear them singing in the tiny house as well. Right. Like you could hear the background music. Yeah. It was like it must have been very fun. Yeah. But um, yeah, the tiny house. I think this is like sort of the reason why MJ and I haven't traveled much as well because we like for first like when we first met, we were in uni, so we were like you know trying to save money, so yeah, we weren't course. like. Yeah wanting to travel as much or if we did we would travel with friends right so we would always say oh we'll travel we we like traveling but we would always say like um keep pushing it back because we'll be like oh we need to save money we'll travel when we have like proper jobs Mm. and uh, and now that we have jobs we're like oh well we'll travel when we get a house (laughs) so we keep like pushing pushing it it back Yeah. yeah so but then i thought like no we can always like you know go travel like to closer places or like you know travel on a budget but the thing that comes with it is like you can always go camping and do all you know all these outdoorsy stuff but the thing with that is we like mj and i we really have uh, a very picky um or like we're very picky on like uh pooping situation (laughs) so we can't (laughs) We just Fair and enough. MJ won't even poop in a public washroom or anything, and and, and same same with me. Really? I find it really tough to like. I think when we drove to Cairns with our friends, MJ didn't poop for three days. I don't, I don't blame <laughs> and him. That's just, yeah. So we find that a bit tricky, and I and that's just. I know some people are just like you know fuck it and they'll just do it yeah. anywhere but it's it's we struggle with that yeah. so that's I think is the biggest hindrance when you're trying to travel on a low budget yeah true. it's a bit hard but we're lucky we got this tiny house and it was okay yeah. speaking of like your do pooping you- situation uh when I went to yeah. Sri Lanka last time um yeah. my cousin and I were like we just wanted to do something different so we did this um yeah. like a camping trip with the group oh, of people. Right. So there's this company called Eco Grip Adventures. Um, and they organize like kayaking trips on the Maha Valley River. Like with strangers? Yeah. So it was just she and I, oh. we booked together. Um, and it was like a three day expedition. And it was honestly like, initially I was like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to do this because I'm obviously there only for a <laughs> limited time. And I was like, that's going to take yeah. like three, four days of my holiday yeah but then my cousin really wanted to do it so I was like okay let's go ahead and I'm so glad I did it because it was so nice like we went um kayaking on the rip in the Mm. Mahavali river which you know for those of you don't know is the longest river in Sri Lanka like down the river um and it was so exhausting honestly the two of us we sucked at kayaking we were just going around in circles we kept falling into the water 
how were the currents were, were they strong the currents like? were really strong because it was raining the like two of those yeah. three days it was raining really badly so i actually i think i have a few photos and videos on my instagram but it was so bad like the rip tides and oh my god it was crazy like i was literally like i feel like i'm gonna die on this trip but it, <laughs> like the people like the organizers of the group they're so good like they're very professional yeah. they were like at one point the main guy sam he took me into his kayak and he was like i can see that you're struggling you just sit with me <laughs> i was like okay thank you <laughs> so we did you have to sign anything like if you died on this uh, probably <laughs> expedition did. i signed to... something i don't remember what i signed oh god i know i just signed my life away um but it was really nice like the group of people like for some reason yeah. we just really gelled really well together so i mean even mm. still like we have a group and we are very active we talk on the group and people are like when i go back then i like we want to meet somewhere and do a similar trip mm. and stuff um but even the food we had was like very you know camp style food that they cooked for us yeah. and the toilet there were no toilets so we had to like dig up toilets if we wanted to use the toilet What? Yeah, <laughs> I'm serious. So, because we camped, you had like, to dig up a toilet. Yes. So you dig a hole with a shovel, and then you cover. Yes. Did you? No. Oh my god. So because... that would be my worst nightmare. I would pack up and leave. I'd be like, see ya. No, because it's like so we stop at certain points on the Mahavali River to camp. So we had two of those spots. and the first night it was like horrible because it was raining so bad our, our tents got flooded in like <gasps> it was crazy but i don't think anyone wanted to poop that night because everyone was just so stressed about the sleeping situation and then yeah. the second night was amazing like it was so much more relaxed and i remember when we were like kayaking and going into the campsite there was a crocodile like just basking there just chilling and No one seemed to care and I was terrified like I'm like maybe because like you know I live in Australia and I'm so freaking scared these <laughs> crocodiles are massive. It was just like oh yeah. you know look a crocodile looks so chill about it. Um yeah. and then they were going to like bathe in the river and everything. I was like guys I really don't want to get taken away by a crocodile. <laughs> While there's a crocodile I know, just watching. But everyone was just laughing at me and just making jokes about me and just teasing me which was really annoying. But anyway we survived and then Yeah, so like MJ, I was completely clogged up. I was like, I'm not shitting anyway. So you didn't poop for three no, days? No, of course not. Yeah, well, I don't blame you. Yeah, I mean, I obviously like peed. Like you can pee anywhere you want. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, peeing is yeah, fine. But there were people. Just, I don't know. There were people who were very like good with it and were doing it like twice a day or whatever. And there was so, it was like it was so hilarious at the start when they told us about it. we were like so embarrassed to even talk about it but at the end of the three yeah. days it was everyone was just so like aware of it. everyone else's pooping schedules because oh there God. would just be like you know we would see oh. someone walking off with a, a shovel and we were just like oh you know they're just going to do their business and we were just so casual about it whereas at the start of this we were just like oh my god like let's not talk about this <laughs> But we just became so comfortable with each other that we were just talking about it. But how do people it. do that? Honestly, I don't, and the other like, thing was there were freaking elephants, right? And I was like, imagine if you're doing your business and then a freaking elephant comes up behind you, then what do you do? <laughs> what if a bug bites you? I don't care about a bug. I'm way more scared of the elephants coming after me. <laughs> Well, elephants you can see, bugs you can't see. Yeah, true. I you suppose. know what I mean. And then there's a lot of dirt and di- oh, I don't But know how was, to do that. But it was fun. It was fun. But then I see all my friends like you know going on these hikes and camping, and it looks so beautiful. Yeah. Like it, it must be really fun to you know be with a group of people, and it's obviously a very you know. like amazing experience but then i'm like i want to do that but that my bowel thing it's like <laughs> yeah it's stopping me from like wanting to do that because it's oh, it's hard like if there's anyone who's like properly hacked the hacked the proper way to do this without you know i mean i feel like australia is quite good though compared to a lot of other places because it's such a country yeah. that's so big on camping that there's camping, a lot of true. stops You know, and campsites yeah. and restaurants. And campsites. Yeah, yeah, that have... But they look... 
Huh? That's the thing that there 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 are a lot of um like you know public. It's just not up to your standards, like is it? Exactly. Oh, they okay. don't look bad. Okay, I'm like, sorry, I'm... Your Majesty. I'm very sorry. It's not up to your standards. Have you been to those places? <laughs> Have you been I'll there? Oh, close my eyes, so close disgusting. my nose, and just do it and come. Oh, that's it. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. I'm just even like the thing is though, if I look at it. I'm going to be traumatized with that image for the rest of my life. And then I'm going to see that every time I close my eyes. This is the whole reason why I wouldn't like taste anything for the first time as well. I would make MJ taste oh it. God. Because if the taste is too bad, then I'm going to be traumatized and I don't want to remember it. So if it's okay, oh then gosh. after like I make the adjustments, I would taste it. MJ is like the um, hamster. <laughs> So the, he's like the, the guinea pig that I use the guinea for everything. Pig. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So even if there's like a public washroom, I would make him go there first and see if it's like okay. So <laughs> what if you carried like a little porta potty? Would you still not be okay with that? I am willing to give that a go. Okay. But I feel like I have a I have a couple of friends who's like very outdoorsy and it's like, you know, love camping mm. and they've been trying to like convince us to go camping with them. And they're even like um, willing to buy this portable like toilet yeah. or whatever thing uh, where it's like a box and then you go and do your business. And then there's like this chemical like tablet or oh, whatever okay. you do, like put in and it just makes everything like powdery or dust or like really? that, not dust but it wow. makes makes the consistency um <laughs> like you know dirt or whatever I don't, know, I don't know how that works but okay i'm okay with that it's just, yeah as long as there's also another river close by so i can you know be squeaky clean <laughs> It's just tough. It's hard for some people. Uh, I don't think. I think that like the camping industry has a lot of um, growth potential. Growth. It has still has a long way to go to attract people like, like myself the, to attract princesses <laughs> like you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Or they should like give us a tablet where we don't need to do anything for three, four days to like you constipate I mean? you. Just, <laughs> yeah exactly i feel like I that'll would, come yeah. with other problems though so <laughs> <laughs> that's fine <laughs> and then it and then you can finish it off with a diarrhea tablet or something on the last day to like so see wash people it all like there. mj and i it happens naturally yeah. to us like so oh. after that trip right i came home yeah. not even 10 minutes not even 10 minutes right. i was just just gone you know so your mind is your yeah mind and muscle so connection my, exactly. is so good <laughs> my mind was just like hold it in girl hold it in <laughs> but you didn't you didn't even get the no, feeling that you needed no. to go i went with okay. my cousin so my cousin and i were like okay let's do this we picked up our shovels ah. we went and i was like no there's no it's right. nothing's happening <laughs> And I was like, no, right. I'm just going to stand here and wait until you're done because nothing's happening. <laughs> wow. Maybe it's like, I don't know. Maybe your mind is just like, this is not the way to no, do this. So yeah. Let's just hold it in. But you know, did you, you eat think, properly? I did. I did eat properly. Uh, but you know, if okay. you think about it, our ancestors, that's what they did, right? You know, like yeah we we need to we need to learn the ways of our ancestors that's true that's true but then i also have this i think i just my situation is a bit different i feel like sometimes if i watch too many like animal documentaries and things like that i'm even like scared to use the actual toilet because i feel like i i the minute i close my eyes imagine like snakes crawling up that um toilet sweetheart you have issues you have issues i know (laughs) this is why i need therapy (laughs) subscribe to our youtube channel so i can afford what do you you tell your therapist i have nightmares about snakes going up my bum (laughs) i i feel like i just this imagination is wild i can tell i don't know what's wrong with it she's wild (laughs) <laughs> yeah so that's my issue. those are my issues with camping i really want to love it I, it looks amazing it looks so fun because you know you you're in nature and it's it's good um and it's lovely but it's just that <sighs> someone please come up with a solution for dash exactly to be able to go maybe camping. this is what we should do maybe because this is my problem and this is my problem to solve and i should I do something so, about yeah. it. i should innovate I agree. something so i agree <laughs> 
Well, that has been a very fun (laughs) conversation. Too much information. (laughs) I don't know. I I wasn't holding back. (laughs) I don't think both of us did. So sorry, guys, if you get the ick about topics like this. Very sorry. It was her fault. It's all right. (laughs) It's. I'm sure this is relatable to someone probably, out there, probably. and if it is, please please let us yeah, know. Please share. <laughs> yeah, don't don't um, let us you know be embarrassed about this. Share your um, struggles agree. with us so we can feel a bit better. Exactly. About <laughs> Moving on from that very interesting topic, <laughs> I also had a very interesting event this week. We had a career expo. Oh, nice! Um, in South Australia, it's called. I think it's there in. I don't know if there's in every state, but I know they definitely they do it in South Australia and Western Australia. It's called the Big Meet, right. where like a lot of companies, any pretty much anyone, any employer can come in. Um, have a stall and you know do a career expo it's mainly uni students and graduates but it's right. also welcome to anyone and everyone um, so our company had a, um, a stall there so we were there to represent the company and there was a lot of students um, and I met a lot of like some uh, listeners as well nice. there were, yes there were some girls uh, who came and speak to us from and then, like our, uh, our podcast well they also knew MJ. They were like, oh, oh give our regards oh, to MJ. Bloody MJ. MJ. Like, well, well. Stealing all <laughs> our credit. Stealing our thunder. <laughs> yes, exactly. But no, it was really nice to see. There was a lot of Sri Lankan students um, who came and uh, spoke to us. Um, and then, yeah, there was like very interesting questions. I lost my voice at the end of the day. Oh, wow. I finished it at like, I came home around like 3 34 and i cr- i passed out until like 7 p.m because wow. i was so tired yeah. it was really fun though it was really fun speaking to everyone because there was a lot of questions around um how they like there was a lot of international students who were like sort of worried about how their sort of visa status is gonna oh, okay. affect in finding and finding a, a job, job and yeah. things like that yeah. Um, but yeah, it was really fun um, getting to speak speak to different people from different backgrounds as well. Some people have done masters, some people have done uh, bachelors, some people have finished their bachelors and now looking for a job job while they're doing their PhD. Oh wow! From like from there were people from finance backgrounds, IT to like chemical engineers, geologists. So it was really cool nice. speaking to all these different people. Um, there was a lot of questions and some of them which I couldn't answer because I didn't have the same sort of discipline or the background. Yeah. Um, but it was really nice to sort of give them advice in adv- advice on like how to um, face an interview how I prepared for my interviews and how the sort of company culture is um and as a woman in the industry as well speaking about that so it was really nice very refreshing and it was very loud as well so you had to like scream Scream. in order to talk to them yeah um but there was a lot of other not gonna lie there was a lot of other companies and stores that I wanted to go and talk to as well which I didn't get to because it was so busy (laughs) but our graduate coordinator was there and then she was like I would very much appreciate it if you all don't go and speak to other people (laughs) and find yourselves other jobs (laughs) it's like we'll try but there was like right in front of me there was like a major sort of electrical um two major electrical companies that I was like very much interested in but I couldn't go uh, you me. behaved it yourself so busy. <laughs> yeah <laughs> also I was in company merch so yeah, I couldn't go course. and talk to them yeah. <laughs> but yeah some people had really cool merch because um uh, we had lollies and stuff like that but then um there was this other sort of mining company. Uh, they had rocks, um, obviously oh, for wow. the, for for on for display, but they also had sort of like you know the stress balls, right. the sort of same material in the shape of a rock, oh, which is nice. really cool. And they had little um, hard hats as well, which is like adorable. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was really nice seeing all these um, yeah different companies. Oh, cool. uh, it's a nice experience um, for you yeah it was it was very nice to like there was a lot of other graduates as well um and 
Oh, and then I saw this um, South Australian Navy mm. had a store, and oh, okay. there was these um, girls in their uniform. Have you seen the Navy uniform? No, I haven't. It's like a different shades of blue, but in a camouflage sort of okay. print. Oh, they look so cool. I was like, really? if I had been like an Australian, if I grew up here, I would have definitely done that. But just, just for because the uniform. I could <laughs> uniform. Oh my god, they look so cool. Oh, I need to and check they it look out. so very. They look very badass too. Yeah. And they had like very, they had this serious look on their face. Yeah. Still very approachable, but you know, they like, they could kick ass. Oh, they look so <laughs> cool. I was like fangirling. Fangirling them. Just, they look so cool. Oh, the nice. uniform looks sick. Oh, and they were, yeah. They were wearing this like, um, the steel cap boots and mm. they had the uniform on. Oh, so good. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that's that. <laughs> So you've had a really um, interesting week. Yeah, it was a full on week. Mm. Um, it was good because um, because of the expo and it was everything. I was um, on site. Sorry, uh, in Adelaide, oh, in the Adelaide office, except for uh, being on site, uh, which is nice and refreshing. Mm. It was really nice to see the people in the office that I don't get to see every day. Yeah. So it was really nice. Um, but yeah, that was that. Cool. Um, but yeah, I think we've got a, a bit of a new topic that we'd mm. like to discuss today. Like, I think that was a good entryway to the topic. Exactly, but yeah. We thought we'll discuss a little bit about um, brown culture, stereotypes involving around brown women, mm. um, and some of the stereotypes in our culture Yeah. Um, for that. Um, are there any sort of... St- when we when I when I told you that we'll talk about this topic, is that was there anything that you were like, oh, this is definitely a massive stereotype? Or I think uh, when you say stereotypes, like immediately what came to my mind is how brown people are represented in media, in mainstream media. Mm, interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, like you know <coughs> from the movies and stuff we saw growing up. Like, yeah. one of the examples that comes to my mind is The Simpsons. It was, I can't remember mm. his name, but the, the brown guy in that, the Indian guy, he was portrayed as, you know, like, he owned a shop and then he had that typical Indian accent. Yeah. And that was kind yeah. of made fun of, I believe. Like, it wasn't yeah. really something positive. It was kind of, like, funny, yeah. you know, his accent was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, and then, like, similar movies where even brown women and even Harry Potter, like, yeah. Parvati and Padma Patil oh. you know when they had like I love the fact that JK Rowling used like two brown names yeah. in that and brown people in that um and oh but the costumes were horrible I know that's what I'm saying so obviously she had nothing to do with the costumes but I'm um, like yeah. the movie like the directors and costume people like those were atrocious costumes I'm sure MJ will put a picture of that here but it was just like this bright <laughs> fluorescent orange and yeah pink. nobody and it's like come on indians wear such beautiful costumes of Plus, such beautiful yeah. attire that is like yeah. the worst thing you could have picked you know and yeah like those girls looked horrendous horrendous in that yeah so that's what kind of i feel like when you say brown or like i mean obviously when you say brown it it's a lot it's a big area like we mentioned that we were talking yeah. about that before as well when you say asia it's not just south like uh, chinese people same way if when yeah. you say south asia it's not just indian people India. it's like yeah. sri lankan pakistani bangladeshi nepalese everyone you know yeah. we all fall into it, but for some reason everyone thinks it's just one big india you know yeah. so <laughs> like it's just yeah that was the first thing that really came into my mind yeah. Um, but I know that there's been a, a big push in the last few years to yeah. really get out of that stereotype. And a lot of people like Mindy Carling and, you know, really mm. influential actresses and actors yeah. um, are now changing that norm, which yeah. is really amazing, I think, you know. I mean, obviously, mm. there's a long way to go, but baby steps. And but that's, we'll get yeah, there. I think they had the representation has been really good mm. in the past few is I think especially within um, like the s- cinema industry. Yeah. Um, but I think it should also be done in a very careful way, just mm. not not just to cover like oh this film movie's got the 
representation right or yeah, things like that. Yeah, just tick, they tick should, the box. It should be – exactly. It yeah. shouldn't be just about ticking a box. It should be carefully curated and done the right way. Yeah. Which I think – I don't know if you've seen, like, there's a show called Never Have I Ever, mm. which the story is – I don't. It's it's very lame, but okay. um, because it's it's catered to a, that young teenager audience. Um, Is it the one with the I Sri think, Lankan Tamil girl? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But she she her character's um, a South Indian girl. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think they've done a really good job um, at getting the representation right. Um, and all those tiny details. So this story revolves around a South Asian um, family. Mm. But when you say South Asian, they're a Tamil family. Right. Um, but sometimes you would see in these stories, um, you'll be talking about a Tamil family, but they'll be eating different like sort of butter chicken and things like oh, that, okay. which doesn't really make sense yeah. because – like Tamil people Tamil food would different. have different yeah. food, right? Yeah. But in this particular show, they they have they use the proper Tamil songs. Oh, nice. Um, okay. Proper Tamil terms. Yeah. Proper Tamil food. This is not a. This is not to say that Tamil people cannot eating eat of cannot course. be eating yeah. butter chicken or anything yeah. like that. But at a at a scene where you show like regular like a setting of a, a Tamil family coming together and having dinner, you would think that if it's not a special occasion, they would have their regular their comfort foods, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think that was like it, to go to that tiny level or detail mm. and get that right is a representation Definitely. done right. Yeah. Because yeah. someone, a, a, a Tamil girl, a young Tamil girl looking at that would find it easier to relate to that right Absolutely. Uh, when you get the details right so i think it has been there have been a lot of improvement in the past mm. um uh few years i think mm. towards getting improving that representation yeah. in the industry um and i think it's also um i think i found it very refreshing when the uh the marvels miss miss marvel i think is a uh, a Muslim superhero. Oh, wow, um, okay. Which I thought... That's amazing. I don't know if they got the... I think they could have improved the story a lot more. Uh, but just by having that sort of representation there, yeah. um, having it revolve around Pakistani culture and nice. the Muslim culture, um, explaining their religious um, importance, um, religious beliefs... Um, and also having that um, that music that's relevant to their culture was like a very big thing. Yes, the story isn't like the best mm. or the effects must not be the best, but I still believe that representation matters Absolutely. and that is a big step and Definitely. it's going to make a little Muslim girl very happy. Yeah. You know, if, mm. if that can be done, I think they've achieved a lot. Yeah. Um, but of course, like you don't need to get everything right the first try. You can yeah. still, you know, build up. Um, and there was a lot of, I don't know if you remember, there was a lot of controversy, um, about the live action movie, Little Mermaid. Were you, did you? About because what? the Little Mermaid, so the little, the actress that plays the mermaid is a black person. And there was a lot of controversy when they released the trailer, when they found, when people found out that it was portrayed by a black person, because the Little Mermaid okay. in the Disney story is He's a white, white person. Right, okay. Um, and there was a huge ba Well, there was a lot of positivity at the mm. same time. There was a bit of backlash, mm. and then there was a. I remember when this was released at work, this guy told me like how ridiculous it was to be like a black girl do portraying this character mm. because he his point was <laughs> I found it very funny but his point was how it's impossible for black people to have red hair is was his point and then I was like this is a human being with no legs yeah. there, there's no way that tell can me, happen tell me okay what, what is I don't I think <laughs> I think a black person having red hair is the least of your concerns, bro. 
she's got she's got a fish tail for feet. Yeah, that's that's not odd. But the black person with red hair is odd. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, anyway, <laughs> but there was a lot of controversy <laughs> with that. But I also remember seeing a lot of TikToks when the official trailer was released. Mm. There was a lot of um, black girls, like young girls reacting to the trailer. And they was like, they were so surprised. There was like oh. videos of them watching the trailer and being so surprised. Oh. And it's like, the, I remember there was this one girl's like, oh my gosh, she looks like me. And then oh, I was like, that's oh. so cute. Yeah, and and that right there is why representation exactly, matters, right? Yes. Um, but yeah, I I, just, I think it's there's still a long way to go, but I, people still need to understand why that's important Definitely. because it's because there's someone that's you know that's gonna feel amazing when they're being represented, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so talking about these stereotypes, one of the other main stereotypes that there is like people, I think brown women because of their cultural background, um, as well, or I think this can be applied to like brown people in general, but more to brown women is that, um, they're very submissive. They're not the very mm. dominant type of uh, personality traits. You don't see a lot of that. They um, clearly haven't met us, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I think that's changing and I think that's really yeah. good, changing for the better. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I can definitely see why that's a stereotype because, you know, yeah. there's still um, a lot of that in the society that we we still that see that as a very common trait and yeah. people are still encouraged to be that um certain communities still encourage that um but i think it's also important i think noting that you see a lot of i think it's very being a bit submissive or being very obedient is quite in like sort of very entangled with our culture Mm. and the way we are raised we're asked not to like speak until spoken to you don't speak against um someone um if they're older than you you don't ask questions you just exactly you don't question things yeah Yeah. you just do as you're told that's what um you're told when uh especially growing up and that that can have a lot of effect on someone's confidence Definitely, and someone's yeah. beliefs. Like if you're being told to do something that you don't necessarily agree with, but your culture, the way you raised, the yeah. way the way you're raised, you're not exactly raised to be comfortable with confrontation, right? Exactly. So yeah. it can be really hard when you're, especially in your career, when you're put in a leadership position, it can be mm. a bit of hard because confrontation is something that should be, that's very normal um that's something normal that you go through when you're a leader because yeah. um you know you need to lead and guide a team so that can be a bit hard when you're when you're taught something else from a very young age from the time you're young. um yeah. but yeah so have you sort of experienced anything like that or what are your thoughts on that i think yeah because even in school right like we're always told to listen to our teachers everything mm. our teachers say is correct Correct. and yeah you don't you don't ask questions about anything it's just you just take things as they are said to you and um I think that really like you say affects self-confidence and also leadership skills and then when I moved here and when I was exposed to the Australian education system where Mm. it's all about questioning it's you question everything like kids are constantly told to analyze question analyze question yeah that was such a surprise for me and even when you know I would be on placement and like kids would ask me questions I would just initially be really shocked by it because I'm like what do you mean because I told you so and then I would have to consciously get myself out of that situation and you know, actually answer the question that they've asked me. Mm. So, like, I think in our culture, they just don't realize the damage that that does to you when yeah. that's what you've been told from a very yeah. young age. And like you say, it is changing, definitely. Yeah. But then I'm also thinking if it's only changing in, like, the urban parts of our yeah. country, you know, yeah. if, like, the rural parts are still the same. Yeah. Do you think? 
I I think so, sadly. Yeah. But I think definitely yes, it should change. But yeah. I think um with the whole education system, right? It's a bit tough because I remember like all our like tutors and stuff um like our science tutors and everything everyone kept like telling us it's like oh when we teach you something think about it question it and then try to absorb it and you know get it into your brain without like just writing down everything that we say like parrots and memorizing things but then you you say that but then that's not what our culture that's not what yeah. we grew up like yeah. we we are hardwired into like yeah. um believing and doing whatever we're told to yeah. do. What else but then you also you? Qu- ask us to question things like when you're yeah. hardwired into do something it's so hard to change I it, know. right? Oh, that's so I, true. Yeah, exactly. And especially with our education system. People like especially now like uh, ordinary levels and things like that. People can get away with like memorizing things. Yeah, you know? absolutely. You can memorize yeah. the questions and pass and that shouldn't it's be It's just a memory test as long exactly. as you're good at memorizing. Yeah, and it, that yeah. shouldn't be the case. That no. I think fundamentally the education system needs to change the so- the sort of the way we assess someone's yeah. knowledge needs to change i think definitely. um that's still a long way to go with that but mm. i think that could definitely help um i don't know rewire that behavior um mm. of starting to question things mm. um and then learn i think that's a better way to learn as well um, absolutely and i think yeah. that would also help in like your private life like if you were yeah. you know then go on to be in relationships and then right. if you are again like if you're like you say hardwired into doing something someone tells you then you're more likely to want to look up to your partner in a way that they tell you exactly what to do yeah and where to go and and you've always been told no don't question it so of course exactly. that's what you're just going to do everything they tell you yeah. you know so and you're it's it's very easy for you to be mistreated that way. Exactly, yeah, taken advantage of. And not realise that, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's really important to question everything. It's okay to question everything. Yeah. Just questioning something is pretty, is only because you don't understand something in the first place and you're just wanting to understand it. Yeah. And sometimes when you question things, both parties tend to re-evaluate everything. Exactly. I think it's definitely... Um, a good trait to have and I think it's also very much we see this growing up because the sort of work ethic that we've grown up seeing our parents um, have Mm -hmm. is a lot more like they've they treat their job like it's I don't know they have so much respect Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know they they worship pretty much a lot of people worship their job they have that much of respect towards that job yeah. which you don't necessarily see in the yeah. work culture in australia Absolutely. it's more lean because in sri lanka i feel like people almost believe that they live to work to whereas work, here yeah. it's more like you work to live yeah, it's not exactly. it's not a necessity you can just yeah. you can also have a good life that that does change because of the standard of living mm. the conditions mm. of standard of living as well but yeah we so like when I first started because I haven't I I so I grew up watching my parents work mm. work was everything to them uh, they would like cancel all their like they would adjust their personal life to match their work life yeah whatever yeah. responsibilities um they had at work they that would come first and then yeah. their personal life right yeah. so I I always grew up watching like looking at that and yeah. then when I first started working here, whether it was a retail job, whether it was a cleaning job, whether it was like my professional job, I had the same amount of respect for every mm-hmm. job. Like I wouldn't leave, like if I had to take a day off, obviously that has changed over the years now. Yeah. I think I have a more yeah. healthy relationship, but yeah. um, not that it was toxic, but it can, if if I had a, if I had the wrong kind of like sort of leadership or the wrong kind of boss, that could have easily mm, been a very toxic definitely. That's um, the thing. Yep. culture or a relationship with work. Mm. But I had, I have always had a very, a, a lot of respect for my job. 
like even if I wanted to take some leave I would make sure that all my responsibilities all my jobs are done for that day and nobody else had to do anything like nobody else had to fill in for me yeah. um which I didn't have to do yeah. but it's just that work ethic work culture we've seen growing up yeah, that our parents true. um <clears throat> go through what they do um which yes like it can easily become like a toxic trade as well yeah but I think the more I've seen people around me handle their work life and the work-life balance I think I have now adjusted a little bit more to suit like a healthy to maintain a healthy work-life balance have you what about you how has your experience been in that yeah I think mine's been similar so um I think when you say you know talk about brown people and their work ethic a lot of people tend to know that brown people work really, really yeah. hard compared yeah. to, you know, other people. Mm. And like you say, that could be taken the wrong way. But what's so different about Australia versus Sri Lanka is that here, like a lot of companies really focus on well-being and yeah you know having a personal life and things like that and obviously that would like greatly depend on the industry you're in but a lot of the times even like they just talk about it even though sometimes they don't practice it they will talk about it because they know that if they don't it could go against them right yeah so like an example of what happened over the weekend what I experienced was so you know I, I mentioned I work in retail and Um, one of the ladies that I was working with yesterday, she's full-time. So Mm. when you're a full-time employee at this company, you don't have to work public holidays. So I think this is the same for a lot of companies. You don't have to work the public holidays. You can choose to work it. So even if you don't work, you would still get paid. But if you work, you get your double time and a half payment. Yeah. Yeah. So... um, on Saturday, I was like, this other guy was telling me this lady never works public holidays. So, you know, she's probably not going to show up to her shift. Um, and then I spoke to my manager and I was like, hey, listen, I'll be opening with this lady. And I really don't want her not to show up, you know, because that's mm. going to affect me. Maybe just check with her to see. And then he was like, oh, no, 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 she'll show up. She'll show up. I was like, okay, fine. If you are so sure. So then I Mm. worked with her yesterday. And this was like for the shift today. We were talking about it. Um, And she was on the roster. So I was like, oh, you know, I heard that you don't work public holidays. And she was like, yeah, uh, I don't. And I'm not coming to work tomorrow. And I was like, but you're on the roster. Yeah, shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that her responsibility? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I was like, but you're on the roster and you're with me. And she's like, oh, it's fine. I wasn't asked if I wanted to work. So I'm not coming in. And I was freaking out because for me, I'm like, girl, I'm going to have to pick up your slack now. Yeah. And then one of the managers heard it and she was like, oh, you're not coming. I didn't know that. And then she was like, yeah, well, no one asked me if I wanted to work. So why should I come? I'm full time. It's on the roster. It's your responsibility to let them know. I'm I'm entitled to have the day off. And in my head, I'm like, I understand that you are entitled. But if I was on the roster and it's my normal day, I would at least let them know. That's basic. like that's it's basic courtesy, courtesy. right? Courtesy, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's that's communication. I, I know. Yeah, it's but then some... she was just, she was just like, no, I've been here long enough. They know that I don't work, so it's their problem to deal with. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so but like, I feel like the that's another extreme. not gonna have to put up with that. You're gonna have to put up with that. I know. That's what I'm saying. Someone like, else is to gonna suffer it. just exactly. because you couldn't communicate. Like, and you... it was not even a like a little shift. It was like a ten hour shift. So if she didn't show up 10 hours, no one was going to ca- cover that, you know? And the manager, she was pissed. She was like, 
well, it would have been really nice if you told yeah. us. And she was like, how hard can that be? Like, just yeah. to tell them, look, you've made a mistake. You've actually, you know, rusted me to work this shift. But yeah. I'm, sh- I'm not sure if you I'm didn't know. But in, I, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's just a little conversation. I know. I know. It was just very, like, it just gave me the ick. Like, it was very icky. Mm. And anyway, yeah. they, she sorted it out. The manager sorted yeah. it out. But she was really mad. Like, obviously, yeah. you could tell. But then I was thinking... I, like, I don't know if this is the brown in me or just me as a person. Yeah. I would never, never even dare do something like that, you know? Like, me if I, because our rosters come out two weeks in advance. And if I saw that, immediately I yeah. would be texting my manager being like, hey, you know, sort this out. Or like yeah. even a few days into it. Not the day before. And she wasn't yeah. planning on saying it. She only yeah. said it because I brought it up, you know? Yeah. So yeah. that was just, just like very disrespectful, I feel like. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But I remember now that you told me this, I remember when I was working as a waitress um, in the hotel that I used to work at, um, there was a lot of like, not teenagers, but a lot of like 20 year old girls and boys that were working that would constantly not show up to their not shift. Not show up, yeah. Um, and that was a very um, sort of common occurrence and sort of no one was surprised by it. It's like, oh. Exactly. And everybody knew that she would like this part, like whoever had a, like a thing on a roster day was like, oh, I have this party. I've told them that I can't come, but they've still rostered me. So I'm not going to show up. Or like that, that was a common sort of, that was the culture there yeah. and that was like I couldn't get my head around it because that mm. was like for me like it looked like such an irresponsible thing to do because yeah. you know and I don't know why anyone would do that because that job it was a casual job everyone was casual there so if you don't show up you don't get paid you don't get paid yeah yeah but then I remember one of these girls um, one of my close friends who worked there at the time um, had a birthday party and I wasn't sure because I really needed the money so I really wasn't sure whether I wanted to go to that party and miss the shift but then she was really close she was a really close friend so like um, I think uh, before like one week I decided that I'm gonna go but I think I found a person who could cover my shift Mm. And then I went to the manager yeah. and then he's like, oh, Tashani, so you just want the shift off? I'm like, Joel, I'm not that irresponsible. What do you think yeah. of me? You know me better than, you know me. Yeah. I was like, I found someone to call my shift. He's like, of course you did. It's just too yeah. nice, Tashani. <laughs> and that's taken as like a very nice thing when that's, that should be the bare minimum, I yeah. would have thought. But, yeah. Um, yeah. but I think that's that's our culture, the way we raised. That's and true. The way we, we, and I think that's to a certain extent, I think that's, that's a good trait to have, good. the respect for yeah. your job. Definitely. Um, but not to like a very toxic extent yeah exactly Um, because the thing is what happens is sometimes like you say you know depending on the company or the management they can tend to take you take wrong use of it or misuse it yeah where so that's when I think it's really important that you know your rights when it comes to your workplace um like things like your breaks and you know Mm. what like your penalty rates everything your entitlements Uh, yeah exactly because I know that a lot of like, it's really sad to say, but a lot of Sri Lankan, Indian restaurants, no, they're yeah. notorious for taking advantage of yeah. students from yeah. their own culture, which is really sad. Because they know, complete, they know, the yeah, sort of, they know um, about them. Yeah, the, they know the mindset that they come. Exactly, with, exactly. So. And they have this kind of thing like, you should be grateful that we want you to work here. Yeah, Instead even though of, you're getting paid. <laughs> exactly. Instead of thinking you know, we should be grateful that you want to work for us and support us when it's really busy and support us keep this business alive. Mm. And I think that came to show during COVID, right? Like where a lot of people, you know, like after COVID as well, like, you know, they didn't go to work or like they were sick or whatever. That's when everyone started focusing on the importance of their employees, you know? So um, yeah, like, like I said, like know your rights. If you are just entering the workforce coming from Sri Lanka, um, it's great to be, you know, really mm. responsible and uh, respect your job, but know your rights, know your entitlements and, yeah, you know, question things and yeah. try not to let people 
take, take you advantage. for a ride. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, are, like from my experience so far, a lot of the sort of non-brown um, sort of management that I've had have really appreciated the work ethic mm. of like Sri Lankan or brown people yeah. and how hard they worked and they've been appreciated um, for, uh, for that. Um, but there's also that people who know their background and try to take the advantage mm. of it. So yeah. try to just be aware of that and then, um, yeah, don't let anyone take advantage of your mm. good work ethic and don't change just because somebody else did. You don't have to change your work ethic to just, you know, um, uh, to adjust just because somebody else took advantage of that that doesn't mean that yeah. you have to change your work ethic and the way you um weave your career the we the we we you have on your job um mm. and how important it is to you because mm. um it's not all the same just because you yeah. had one bad experience doesn't mean that it's the same everywhere else yeah. but yeah it's certainly something that everyone needs to be aware of especially yeah. in a multicultural country like australia absolutely absolutely yeah yeah so that was a very fun conversation but um yeah. i think something we've um discussed and we thought we will start to do is that answer one of your questions every episode one or two questions mm. um so if you guys have any questions for us um and if you'd like to know more about us um please send us uh through your questions on instagram um i think the handle is brown girls down under you can also send it to our personal page personal pages but um we would very much appreciate it if you can direct it them to our instagram page um yeah. so that's it's in it's all in one place so we can just go there and choose the question we want to answer um and then do send us some creative questions some things some, some questions that make us think you know yes. what i mean <laughs> um so yeah so and some of the questions have been really fun um i think our q a video should be up by now so we had yes. really we had so much fun recording that and there were some interesting questions that make us really question um the way we think and mm. our options and our choices so which was really interesting and yes. very fun yeah. um so i've got a question for you uh shanali um yeah. this is um uh, especially for the curly haired girl um that's obviously you right uh, no, obviously. Can't you <laughs> look see? at all those curls can't you see these <laughs> magnificent curls but, <laughs> but yeah this uh question is for you from um well i can't say the name but um <laughs> this person um is uh so she says hi um uh, i'm a person who's very much attached to my siblings but i'm gonna leave the country very soon which will be really hard for me so just wanted to know how that has affected your relationship with your siblings um, when you were migrating and how you handled it. Yes, good question. So before mm. I actually start answering that, um, <laughs> you guys might be wondering why there's a bit of a angle change. And oh, yeah. <laughs> you can see all my chins. <laughs> exactly. Those. So it's because I broke my freaking tripod, tripod. while... <laughs> Just few minutes we were ago. just honestly <laughs> just broke into pieces. So that's why I'm sorry that you have to see. a fresh new angle of Shanali. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm sorry that you have to get really up close and personal with me. I know it's quite <laughs> quite scary, but <laughs> I promise I will get a new tripod next weekend. Um, but yeah, so this is a really good question. So mm. I've mentioned that I am quite close to my siblings. I've got two brothers, one older, one younger. And I'm yeah. particularly close to my younger brother. Mm. Um, like he and I have a five-year age gap. Um, and I don't know, like when I left, I think I was really excited to leave. But then <laughs> as the days grew closer, I yeah. it just started really hitting me. And then yeah. I was just really, really getting really upset um and it was like my younger brother especially has always been like a little baby to me like he's always yeah. been like like obviously my brother but mostly like a like a little child, child. to me yeah <laughs> so like leaving him was really hard like I'm even getting mm. emotional talking about it 
Um, and even my older brother, like he and I have a two year age gap. And I remember he wrote this really sweet letter to me and he was, he gave it to me. When and he you was like, left? When I left, it was like, how old were you when you left? Pages. I was like early twenties. So he was like mid twenties, like 25 maybe. Right. So he, he wrote a was, letter. He wrote a letter. It was so sweet. And he was like, Nangi, don't read this until you get to Australia. Oh, and is he the sensitive type person? Type of person? They are. I think all three of us are. All oh, three of okay. us are. Yeah. Um, but I'm the more, like, I'm sensitive, but I'm loud mouthed. Whereas both mm. my brothers are, like, sensitive, mm. but, like, more not so much. More calm and collected? Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So right. he gave this letter to me and it was oh. like, I think I read it on the plane and it, I was just bawling my oh, eyes out. Have, I was yes. so sad. I still have it, obviously. I don't think I'll ever get rid of it. Um, but it was just like telling me, you know, how proud he is of me and how much he'll miss me. And, you yeah. know, how our relationship, like when we were very young, we were very close. And then when my little brother came into the picture, like we kind of because I grew closer to my little brother so he was like talking about all that and he was just saying you know I love you regardless of everything and you know I'll always be there for you and then he gave me like a stone I don't even know if he remembers this but he gave me like a crystal crystal stone I think it was like a eye tiger eye or eye of the tiger or something it's called it's for like good luck and safety and all that kind of thing so thoughtful Um, I can't imagine I can't comprehend (laughs) How a guy is so thoughtful. I can't. I know. So he gave... I still carry it. Every single bag that I change to, I carry that with me. <gasps> and like it's been so like sweet. close to a decade now. And I still have it with me. That's um, so sweet. Was he yeah. married at the time? He wasn't. No, he wasn't oh, okay. married. Um, and then my younger brother. So like I said, it was really tough. Like really hard leaving them. Because I was, you know, constantly with them, you know, whatever we did. Because my parents were so protective. They had this Mm. thing like, you know, okay, you can go somewhere, but then one of your brothers has to come to protect you. you (laughs) So these two... I had a friend, like, who also had, like, two brothers older. Well, she had two older brothers. She wasn't even allowed to go to, like, her neighbor's house without her brother. Oh, like wow. That's how protective our parents were. Yeah. But I, like, I, to me, that sounded very crazy and yeah. absurd because I never had that. You never like, had my it, parents yeah. used to forget to pick me up. And I'm just <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what? One time, they actually oh left, like, left me at one of the classes and they went home. They forgot to pick me up and they went home and everyone's like, where's Sesha? And it's like, oh shit, we forgot to pick her up. <laughs> that is that- such, that is like very middle child, middle child behavior. Yeah, Not so much but oldest I was child. The child. But anyway, but I feel like, well, yeah. Oh my I guess God, if there's three so girls, funny. there's like, if you lose one, it's, it doesn't it's matter. It's fine, you've got, you've two, got two more. Two more. <laughs> Well, anyway, definitely, you, were, you were saying. Yeah, definitely not the case for me. So <laughs> they used to always, like, come wherever I went for protection, one of them. Um, yeah, it's so funny. Um, Did you find it annoying at the time? Uh, I think I preferred my brothers coming over my parents oh, coming. Okay. So, oh, like, okay. I was, <laughs> so I was okay with that, you know. Um, but, yeah, so... When I left, like, obviously all of that changed and it was really hard. Like, I really missed them. Mm. And But the thing again, like, with boys, I don't know if this is, like, boys or just my brothers or what it is. Like, they can't keep in touch to save their lives, you know? <laughs> like, But I know for a fact, like, Ryan would be the same. If he had a sibling, yeah. he would be the same. Because to them, like, it's just, you know, no matter, like, even if we don't talk as much... When we meet, things will be like, you know, yeah. how we left you it off. Pick up where you left yeah. it off. Yeah. yeah, so that's what happened, like, when I was gone for five years. I saw them every year, and then during COVID, I didn't go home for five years. Yeah. And then when I went home again, like, my younger brother, because my younger brother and I have a relationship that's very much, like, we just roast each other, we just bully each other. Mm. You know, we're constantly, like, giving each other the middle finger. But if our parents are around, we're just like, you know this so we're like (laughs) that's what we do so because our parents wouldn't understand so that's the kind of relationship we have but then 
we just fell back into it like nothing mm. happened you know which was really nice um but i think if i were to give you tips it would just obviously depend on like going back to our last episode as well touching on that a little bit like your love language and your siblings mm. love language and how they yeah. want to feel loved and appreciated um and i think keeping constant contact would obviously be very important in that oh, case cool. so yeah. i've got a cousin that i consider like my own sister she's she and i are very close so i feel like she and i talk like on like a by bi- like a weekly basis mm. and i talk to her more than i talk to my own siblings so i do mm. consider her like like my sister so i guess maybe because she's a girl and i i'm just mm. thinking you know like i talk to her more That's and right. we have that very steady relationship whereas with my brothers i would go for like weeks without talking to them and mm. then like my younger brother would call me up and be like yo and i'll be like yo like what's up was well, so like it's yeah, just exactly. so casual you know i do agree with what you're saying because i think mj's brothers also the same like they don't communicate as much but yeah. when they do um they're like oh they've just ha- they have been speaking to each other like every, every day, day. Yeah. almost because a lot of the times the way mj would contact his brother is when his brother his brother messages me he's like can you ask aya to call me <laughs> <laughs> and then that's how they would like I was like okay I would and then MJ uh, would call him and then yeah yeah but um I think it's important I think we touched a bit on this uh, about this in our friendship sort of episode as well mm. about how sort of men and women communicate mm, differently true. and how yeah. what's important for each party to maintain yeah. a strong friendship or a strong relationship so it's different yeah. Um I think it's really important to understand the way your siblings communicate, the way mm. your siblings show love, and mm. if constant communication is needed to assure that they're loved, I think that's it. then that's what something something you could do. Um yep. but yeah, it's it's a lot of trial and error because it's not you can't see them or touch them or hug them mm. um like you used to when you're away from them, so communication is key. Um but yeah I think that yeah. those that, that but what you told uh, um her, that those would be some really good tips. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. And like I think don't have like really high expectations that you're going to yeah. speak to them every single day or you know like yeah. things are going to change like the next time you see them things you know they would have grown and they would maybe di- be a little different and Mm. things obviously life happens you know and yeah, sometimes exactly. it could be like you know it could not be a good change you don't know sometimes they have like partners coming into their life who could also change things so yeah. there's a lot of dynamics that could change and yeah. ultimately that is life right that's all a yeah. part and parcel of life and yeah. it's just you just have to accept it but i feel like when you move overseas and you start building your life and you become really busy sometimes you tend to also kind of neglect certain things obviously not intentionally Generally, but it could yeah. happen yeah. yeah so also be kind to yourself and forgive yourself if you are not able to maintain those yeah. relationships but um also yeah making the effort to understand their yeah. communication patterns and their love languages and you know going about it accordingly. Yeah, and I think that's something that I struggled at first as well. Like I told um you before. Yeah. when we started the podcast as well. Like I left when I left um Sri Lanka, my younger sister had like a bob cut and she was like very <laughs> young. And yeah. then I remember like I would only constantly speak to my mom. Um mm. most of the time I didn't have that much um can we like contact with my siblings um like I would still like wish them on their birthdays and I would mm. make sure that that like I think to them I don't know like one of my love languages when I was like away from home is like giving gifts right because mm. that yeah. uh, that's that's an easy way of showing love exactly yeah um because I can't I the timing wasn't right sometimes whenever it's because my parents would somehow make time to like you know um when i'm calling them or facetiming them but mm. it's not necessarily the case because they would be in school or they would yeah. have other things to attend yeah, to yeah exactly um yeah. 
But I remember one time my mom sent me a photo um, of my parents at the sports meet. I could, I, and I saw like it was my parents and my, um, so I have two younger sisters, but the oldest one. And then there was this other girl um, in the photo and I'm like, who, the, who is that? And there's like, that's Vidhuni. That's like your youngest. Oh, I couldn't recognize her because really? she had long hair. She was grown up and she's like wow. this like sort of young adult, almost like a teenage woman. And then I'm like, who? what the hell? Like what? what? When did she? Like, Because I'm imagining a, a short kid with a bob cut, right? And I was like, who, yeah. when did she become this? Because it was wow. like, unrecog- I couldn't recognize her. Really? Um, but that's when it hit me like, things changed like so yeah, fast but then she exactly. was also at that age where like you know you grow really fast during that mm. age um but that's when it hit me so when you like when I visited Sri Lanka last time it was very awkward for me at first because mm. I don't know this person anymore because mm. um like I know this person when she was like seven years old A child, but I yeah. don't know like wh- when she's like 15 or 14 I don't know what so what's the age gap between you guys? Must uh, be a, quite a big is, one. My younger sister and I have a nine year gap. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's quite young. Um, so, yeah. I mean, that's a big, ga- big, big gap. Big sort of yeah. gap, yeah. Um, and I used to like, before I went, she was like this young, like child almost. And I used to like bully her all the time. And then now yeah. I'm like, the things that I used to say to her, if I said that now, it would be like, what the hell is wrong with me? Yeah. <laughs> she's like, yeah. <laughs> because she's trying to have like an adult conversation with me, but I'm not used to having an adult no, conversation yeah. with someone like Because you didn't, you didn't see that middle stage where she grew up, right? Yeah. So you missed out on that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what her interests are. I don't know what shows mm, she watched. Um, we don't have any mutual, um, like, I don't know, things that we like to watch or anything. Yeah. Um, and she always like sort of sees me as like someone who's giving her advice or someone mm. who's gonna look after and now my parents are like oh you're gonna so you're gonna all end up going to Australia so you're gonna have to live with her and then she's like I don't want to live with her she's like <laughs> she's gonna kill me I was like I will <laughs> and she thinks and all obviously because like the way like I, I guess I show my love is like roasting someone or like bullying like gently bullying someone <laughs> um so when I say that that's right if you don't listen to me I'm gonna kill you and she thinks I'm being she serious, takes and I'm like, bro, no, I'm not gonna kill you. Like, what the hell? But yeah, some yeah. somewhere along the line, she just lost that communication, so that sort of banter or like whatever. Yeah. yeah, but I think, but I think we slowly picked it up like pretty quickly um, when we were there. Like the most, the more time we spent together, we like picked it up very mm. soon. So I think. It was really good. And I think um, I think it's just the per- depends on the person you are as well because I'm not used to showing love like in a very conventional way. Conventional way, way yeah. I would very much like if there's anything like my sisters or my family needs, I would get MJ to like ask them what they need and I would like make the arrangements of like, oh, okay, we can do this and then MJ mm. would like, oh, we will do this. Mm. <laughs> But I'm just I'm I I'm not very good at like um, showing love or like mm. um, expressing it is the right word. Right, I guess. okay. Expressing yeah. it properly, so I would just get MJ to do the expressing part, and I'll just mm. do the do the the logistics and. So the, I mean that again comes down to love languages, right? Because yeah, like exactly. that's not yeah. like you're not about words of affirmation I, unless it's bullying. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bullying should, be, <laughs> bullying should be its own love language <laughs> exactly because i feel like you and i will both be there <laughs> yeah and i feel like I, I i can relate to so much when like you share like photos of conversations of you and ryan yeah like like normal people would think like you're like oh my god why are they talking to each other like that it's like yeah. pda and like you know, talking to each other nicely is not our thing. No, we, we don't just, do that. No, exactly. I was like, every time, like, MJ and I, like, 
see each other we never compliment it's like you look so ugly it's like i know it's It's the same yeah exactly it's the same yeah but i I can understand it's like something alien to some people some people yeah yeah but it's but i can i very much love seeing that side when you share that because i'm like oh i can relate to that (laughs) yeah so like a recent one that i shared was there was a video of dash and i like you know doing the podcast and we were both laughing very yeah. <laughs> wide you know yeah. um and i w- i just made a comment about you know how funny we look or whatever and then ryan yeah. commented saying you look like a crocodile in the discovery channel you know? <laughs> <laughs> and i shared that on my story because i want people to see how much he bullies me but yeah. what they do what you guys don't see is how i bully him <laughs> so yeah. <we> just <laughs> But like my favorite video on your feed is I think I don't know if it's for your birthday or for Ryan's birthday. You're like there's a video of you dancing, um, or like doing like a trying to do a ballet dance, and then Ryan comes into the the shot, and then he starts dancing. He pushes you every time <laughs> you come into the frame. You're like you you're like so innocent. You go out of the frame because he pushes you, and then you come back and come try back. to dance, and he pushes you again. It's just. Oh, whenever, whenever I feel down, I look at that and it just lights me up I'm every glad, time. I'm glad I can provide entertainment to you. It. I love how he has such a straight face and he just pushes you. Like. I know, I know. And then there's another video. I don't know if you've seen that. It's um, like I've asked him to take a candid picture of me and I'm just like, oh, Ryan, take a candid picture. And I'm just like posing. And then he's filming it and he's like, what? What do you want me to do? And I'm just like, take a candid picture. And then he's just like... And I'm just like, what are you doing? <laughs> I love it. It's, so I that's, love it. that's our relationship. And that's the relationship yeah. that I have with my brothers as well. Yeah. So people that are re- I'm really close to, that's yeah. the kind of relationship I have with them, you know? So yeah. I was really glad when I went home last time to know that my brother, my younger brother and I, like our relationship hadn't changed. We're mm. still the same, you know? So yeah. I'm sorry, I don't even know if we answered your question. But I think we, we just... did, but... <laughs> I think one more important thing to note is that sometimes love languages change as you grow. Like That's you don't true. need. Yeah. It's not like set in stone mm. that oh my long love language is it like love language is um words of affirmation. No, it, it can change over time because your priorities change, you grow, your experiences yeah. change you. So I think it's it's not going to be very easy especially when you're away. It's going to be mm. a bit hard, but I, I yeah. but I think like everything, if you put in enough effort, I think effort, you can make it yeah. work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think um, that's that will be the advice that we give. Yeah. I think. But, and if you yeah. can, like maybe set a time, at least initially, set a time in yeah. your week that works really well for both of you mm. to just send catch them a Google up. invite. <laughs> Sorry, send them a Google invite. Yeah, in exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or even like. My best friend and I do this. We just send voice notes to each other, you know, so that because then we can just talk and like tell each other what's happening and then listen. Easier than texting. Yeah, yeah, it's like a podcast, you know, we just like listen to it (laughs) when we we can and then we respond. So just finding something that works for you um, and making that person feel like they're valued and loved. I think that way you can maintain your relationships. Yeah. I think that's sound advice. Look at us. We're like professionals. I know, right? We're professionals. (laughs) But yeah, if you've got more questions, please send it through to our Instagram page so we can look at them and answer them. And And we'll answer a question every week. Is that that how we're going to do it? Yeah. And I think also, like, if you've got certain experiences you've gone through, certain situations that you would like to share, obviously, we wouldn't share your details. But Mm. if you want to send them through, I think it will be worth sharing if if it's it's something worth sharing. And it doesn't have to be, like, inspirational or anything. It can even Mm. be funny, like what we discussed this uh, (laughs) uh, earlier in this episode. (laughs) So share us your experiences. I think it will be a very fun thing to share with everyone and see what we think and Mm. if we had gone through the same experience. But yeah, I think this was a fun, a bit of an... uh, A um, random episode. (laughs) A random episode, that's right, yeah. Yeah. But I think it was still fun. It was fun, Um, yeah. Yeah, and I think um, it's it's been really nice to see the sort of positive response we've been getting back yeah. for um, the podcast. 
Um, we really appreciate the support. Um, and we're sorry that there was a bit of a lag in last yeah, week. Yeah, we know, need a episode. better editor. Our because, editor's been you know, slacking a bit. Yeah, our manager slash editor, editor just was just not on his A game that yeah, week. Exactly. But we really standard. appreciate that you guys <laughs> sent us comments and like messages <laughs> asking where the podcast was because yes. we could just send it straight to him and be like yeah. get on it <laughs> exactly the audience is waiting yes you know? yes so that was really um, nice we loved seeing that that yeah. was really nice um and hopefully we from next week onwards hopefully next week will be the first episode where we have a guest hopefully if Ooh. things work out fingers yes. crossed yes so we are really hoping that'll work out and then yeah. we can bring, bring in more people later yeah. on as well looking re- looking forward to that episode i'm yes. very excited to have a guest yep. and i think this would be a very good um a very good discussion yeah. a lot of um very interesting insights yeah, um yeah. And very, i'm sure you guys are kind w- of sick of seeing our faces and hearing yeah, our voices let's bring in a new face yeah yes. something fresh you know <laughs> <laughs> exactly but yeah it's cool. been a fun episode and yeah hopefully i think um we'll wrap this up and then yeah sure. we'll see you again next week we'll see you next week yeah. cool stay Have safe week, stay everyone. hydrated yeah stay yeah. safe stay hydrated and have fun Take care. Bye. Bye. See ya.